continuing Chapter 17's review, let me share a story that's true. A client came into my office and described her legal problems with her construction contract and the contractor to build an addition to her home. She said, we have this addition and the architect drew up this plan to build it. The contractor finished but found out that he did not build it per the plan. Indeed, he added space that's not in the plan. He has not built according to what we agreed at the beginning. As I pried into the facts from the homeowner, she became more upset. She was not looking at this matter from a business or a contract perspective. She merely felt the hurt. She felt that he hurt her, as if perhaps one physically hurts another. I asked if the contractor was charging more. No, she said. As it turns out, the contractor simply calculated wrong. He made a calculation error, and he added extra length to the addition, which he then completely finished, and he agreed to absorb the additional costs for his error. So instead of, let's say, an addition of 40 feet in length, the homeowner received an addition of 45 feet in length. So let's go back to the prior chapter's discussion and ask, is the contractor discharged under complete performance? No, it's not exactly what he promised. It's not 100%. Is he, though, discharged under substantial performance? We could de deem this a minor breach and we would say yes. So then what are the damages? What is the difference between the contract price and what the owner received if it's a minor breach? Well, it's his mistake. He's not charging extra. Indeed, if the homeowner sold her house on the open market, the value that the contractor provided would be higher due to his error, since the market price is based upon square footage. In other words, she's out nothing. No compensatory losses are needed or can be provided. So I said, well, you've got something that's not a damage. You've got something that the market would not consider a loss. Indeed, it would consider it a gain. So you can sue him for the breach of contract, but you would have in-name only damages. In other words, nominal damages. One dollar. There's no fair market value or loss associated with his building. There's only gain. But she didn't like that argument that there was in name only or nominal damages, meaning that he's technically liable, but as there's no injury or no out-of-pocket losses, no damages because of the fair market value, there can be no compensatory damages. Would you like to know why? My uh, client did not take my advice. Well, my curiosity was piqued, and I asked her a personal question, which is, why are you so upset? How does this bother you that he didn't build according to the contract, but he gave you a higher fair market value? Her response was unique. She replied, when the architect designed our addition, I went out and I had furniture custom made, customized for that room. And now, because the room is much larger, the customized furniture does not fit, and I'm very upset. So her problem was not truly a legal issue. Perhaps if the builder had known of the homeowner's reliance when she ordered the customized furniture, he could have helped solve the problem. Uh, she could perhaps have even asked for consequential damages if he had known something of this nature. But even then, I doubt such an argument would be successful. I did understand her point. It was more of an emotional issue or personal issue rather than, though, a legal one. 